Hi, everyone. Welcome into the Building Up Podcast. This is episode number 85. This podcast is recorded from Agape Church in Pinson, Alabama. I'm David McConnell. Thank you guys for being with us this week. On this episode of the podcast, we're talking about the cost of following Jesus. And we're going to be looking together at some passages in Luke chapter 14. And in Luke chapter 14, beginning in verse 25, I'm going to read from there to verse 33. This is what Jesus said. Now, great crowds accompanied him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me, cannot be my disciple. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he's laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? And if not, While the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Now, Jesus has this great number of people that are following him, great crowds. And you think about uh, really how we think about successful churches today or successful religious leaders. We often think of those who have a great following. But but Jesus knew that many people in this crowd that was following him were following him for the wrong reasons. And, and he knew there was a spiritual danger there. And I think we see that spiritual danger in our day where there are people who follow Jesus loosely. They follow him at a distance. They might call themselves a Christian or they call themselves religious, but, but they're following after Christ for the wrong reasons and, and perhaps not willing to follow him to the point where it costs them something. And, and the danger there is that if, if no one challenges them on that, if they're not challenged by the, the word of God, if they're not challenged by someone else, uh, who knows the word of God, then it's possible that they live this life where they are deceived. They think that everything's okay in, in terms of their relationship with the Lord. But yet, at the end of their life, they would find out that they didn't really know him. And so Jesus is challenging these crowds, and of course, through this written word, he's challenging us today, that we can't follow him with a loose connection. We can't follow him for the wrong reasons. And he tells the crowd, first of all, that if you're going to follow him, you must love him. And the, and the type of love that you have for Jesus is going to grow, but it's got to be the type of love that exceeds every other love in your life, even to the point of your own family. And he uses this kind of uh, idiom to to show that You must love even your own family less than you love him. He's not telling us to hate our family. That would contradict other places in Scripture where we're told to love everyone, love our family, take care of those who are close to us. But he's saying that the the type of love that we must have for him, uh, that it must be greater than even those people that, that are in our own family. And and most of the time, I, I think when you're really following Christ, he's going to build you up spiritually and and your ability to love other people is going to grow. And so you're going to be a better father, better mother, better sibling, better friend because of following Jesus. But there may be times in which the relationship you have with Christ actually disrupts other earthly relationships. And Jesus is saying you're going to have to be ready for that. There may be times where people in your own family don't want to have anything to do with you or the relationship you have with them is challenged because of your love for Christ. And you've got to be ready for that and you've got to hold on to Jesus when that happens. Or there may be times where you have to, you have to, uh, put more energy and more strength into your relationship with God and thus you, it 
takes away from the time that you have with your family. And so you have to be prepared for that as well. And that's part of discipleship. Then Jesus goes on to say you need to think about what it means to follow him. You need to count the cost. You need to understand that following Jesus means you're going to have to take up your own cross and be willing to die to yourself and the things in this world. There's going to be times where you're going to have to give up things that you really want to do or to say or certain ways that you want to act. You're going to have to give up your right to control your life and the direction of your life because you're handing that over to Jesus. And and he's telling these crowds, you need to know that up front. This is quite different than maybe how we even do evangelism in America today, where we we tend to concentrate on Come to Jesus because he loves you, which certainly he does, and and pray this prayer that you accept him as your Lord and Savior, and and now you're saved. And Jesus is pre- presenting evangelism a little bit differently that, you know, he's, he's not putting up obstacles or stumbling blocks, but what he is doing is he's, he's putting up markers of truth that this is what it means to follow after Christ. It means you're going to have to be ready to, he says in verse 33, even renounce all that you have, which means you're going to have to be ready that he will be supreme in your life. And following what he says and where he leads you is going to be the number one goal that you have. And you have to be ready for that. You're not going to know at the beginning of your salvation journey what all that's going to mean. And it may be very scary. Honestly, it's Probably scary for someone who's been following Jesus for decades. But there's a willingness in you to follow after him, even knowing that it's going to cost something. And that is a sign of true salvation. So this speaks into how we present the gospel. It, it speaks into how we do evangelism, but it also speaks to us about our, our, our own, uh, our own affirmation. Of, of whether our salvation is real or not. You know, sometimes we worry about, have I, have I truly been saved? Uh, is my salvation, is, is this experience that I've had, is it, is it real? And one of the questions that we can ask ourselves is, am I willing to follow Jesus? Am I willing to follow him even knowing what it's going to cost? And when we say yes to that, when we can't get away from following him, even knowing that at times it's going to be hard, that it's a good sign that he has done something in our heart and that we've been converted. If you think about a passage from, for example, from Mark 4, uh, the parable of the sower where Jesus talks about the word of God being spread like seed. And, and he says that there are four types of human heart that the, that the word of God, that that seed will fall on four types of soils that the, that the seed will fall on. And, and one of them that he mentions, of course, the, the one soil that we want to have, the one soil that represents a converted heart, a heart that has come to know God, through faith in Jesus is good soil and that that seed the word of God sinks into that soil and it begins to to bear fruit but there's a there's a type of soil that Jesus mentions he calls it rocky ground it's one type of human heart that the word of God will fall on and rocky ground is when the word of God is received by someone Jesus said in Mark chapter 4 Immediately they receive the gospel. They receive the word of God with joy. But because they don't have any root in themselves, they only endure for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of God's word, they fall away. And so you have this picture that's quite the contrast from Luke 14 where Jesus is saying, count the cost. Know that if you're going to follow after me, there's going to be a cost to it. And are you willing? And the, the, the person who is saved says, yes, it's scary. I don't know what all that means. I don't know if I'm ready for it, but I can't get away from it. I know that I need to follow Jesus. I know that there's life with Jesus. I know that he and he alone can forgive me of my sins and give me eternal life. So I'm going to pick up my cross and follow him and I'm going to trust that I will know more about what that means as I go. 
That picture stands in contrast to the picture from Mark 4 of the person who is the rocky ground, that they receive the word. They, they hear maybe of, of good things that God will give them if they are saved. And, and, and they love the idea of heaven and they love the idea of eternal life. And so they, they receive all of that with joy. And they endure, but only for a while, because at some point they began to face difficulties because of their following after Jesus. They began to face trouble, and when that happens, they fall away. They turn. They leave Christ because it's too hard. And they don't come back. At least I think that would be the ultimate outcome of someone who's truly not saved. I think there may be times in our life where we wander from God, and my point today isn't to cause you, if you are wandering now or if you have in the past, to doubt your salvation, but ultimately it's about are you willing right now today to pick up your, fall, your, your cross and follow Jesus? Are you willing to do that right now? No matter how long you've been wandering or where you've been, are you willing to count the cost and love him supremely and follow after him? And I think that's the, the beckoning call of Christ in his word. And, it, and if we're willing to do that, the Bible says, come, because anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And this is, this is south. This is ointment. This is healing for those who are deceived by this false evangelism that says, just come to Christ and, and he'll, he'll make your life better. And, and while that's certainly true, this is uh, that, that evangelism approach that leaves out the necessity of counting the cost of discipleship and it's deceiving people into believing they're saved when they're not. This is, this is healing to their souls to hear no, you need to count the cost of following Jesus. Are you willing to pick up your cross and follow him? And when they say, yes, I am, then they have the assurance, the affirmation of true salvation. I want to end in encouraging us as believers that it does cost us something to follow Christ. Every day of your life, it will cost you something to follow Jesus if you're truly trying to pursue him. It may be that it just costs you your time where you set aside your time in order to read the Bible and study. It may cost you sleep because you need to get up early or stay up late to spend time with God. It may cost you, quote-unquote, your money because God leads you to be generous or to give and help other people uh, or, or to give to a local church, and 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 it's a cost associated with that. It may be that it, it costs you a relationship, a friendship. There may be times where you lose people or you lose a relationship with a person out of your life because you're following after Jesus. It may simply be that you have to lose the right to respond to somebody the way you want to. It may be that you lose the ability to handle a situation the way that you feel like handling it, and the Word of God calls you to do something different, to humble yourself, to repent of your sin, and to repent of your anger, and to do good to someone who's persecuting you and trying to hurt you. It may be that it, it costs you because that sin that you, you really want, that pleasure of this life that you really want, that the Bible says is wrong, you have to set it aside. You have to work on, on killing the, the, the very sin that is clinging to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. But here's the encouragement. While, while all of those things are true every day, you're going, it's going to cost you something to follow Jesus. Jesus tells us in John chapter 10 that while the enemy, the God, little g of this world, has come to steal and kill and destroy, Jesus has come that we might have life and have it abundantly. So while there are costs to following Jesus, in the end, it's really not a cost. <laughs> And what I mean by that is for everything you relinquish, Jesus is going to restore that. And he's going to restore something to you in place of what you relinquish that is far greater. And I, this is not a carrot on a stick. This is the promise of God's word. It's the reward of following Jesus, abundant life. And I think you'll get taste of that in this life every day while you are 
picking up your cross and following him, but I know that we will receive the fullness of that reward when we see him face to face in eternity. Abundant life comes, true life comes when we're willing to renounce all that we have and follow Jesus. He has far more for us than our eyes, our ears, our minds could ever see or fathom, imagine What he has for us is beyond what we can grasp. So believe that. Count the cost. Follow him in spite of the cost. And know that abundant life is yours in Jesus. I hope this is helpful to you. Or if you know someone that it might be helpful to, please share this podcast with them. Church, until next time, grace and peace to your family. Thank you for listening to the Building Up Podcast, a ministry of Agape Church in Pinson, Alabama. If you have a question about today's podcast or would like to suggest a topic for the future, please email us, buildingup at agapepinson.com. To subscribe to this podcast, simply search for Building Up from Agape Church in your favorite podcast app.